Well, greetings everyone and welcome to part four of the Business Ownership Workshop series that will focus on your business plan. The three sessions that uh, I have facilitated and this is one in a continuing series of what will be six sessions about the basics of what it means to be in business for yourself. So again, this particular session will be focusing on the importance of putting together a business plan for yourself. So let's just jump right in and talk about your business plan, why it's important to you. Well, I'm a big believer that if you don't have a plan, then you're gonna wander around aimlessly and you might ultimately get to your destination, but it could be costly and it could be fraught, filled uh, with problems. But the reason why a business plan is so important to you is that, again, if you sat through one of the other sessions, you would have heard me speak about the fact that if you're going to need funding of any sorts, have to go to a bank or any kind of a lending institution, that they're going to require that you have a business plan. But even if you don't, you still need to have a strategy behind uh, how you're going to make this business successful or how you're going to figure out whether or not it potentially can be successful for you. So. This is a pretty strong statement. If you fail to plan, plan to fail. Now that sounds pretty black and white and pretty arbitrary. And in all honesty, it's not even 100% accurate because there's always anomalies and always exceptions to all rules. But in general, I have seen the greatest success of business owners occurring whenever they have a strategy and a plan in place that says, here's how we're going to execute. Another important part of this is that you need to really figure out, do you truly have a business that can ultimately be profitable for you? Um, and you need to figure that out by figuring out what's the story of the business before you actually start spending any money. I can't tell you the number of individuals that I have come across that have actually set up a corporation or a legal entity without having fully determined, you know, what's the business that they're going to do. And my suggestion is, why spend money on that? That could be anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 to do that. And why spend that money until you're convinced that you've actually got a good business that can be successful? I want you to be intentional. Uh, the old expression, the devil's in the details. Very, very true. If you haven't done the detailed homework to uh, cover your bases, then you might find yourself being surprised uh, when you don't really want to. So again, another verse from Proverbs, one of my favorite books of the Bible. Uh, this is from Chapter 16, verse 9 says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Um, faith is a very big part of my life and my family's life. Big believer that we need to have a conversation with the Lord before we take on any significant decision-making processes. So again, I encourage you to reach out to the Lord whenever you get your thoughts together and get your uh, business plan together. Seek his guidance. He'll answer you. So what is a business plan? Well, you heard me say this in one of the prior sessions that it is simply the story of what your business is about. Um, full detailed story of what that business uh, is going to be. So what are the details of the story? What does it take to get from wherever you are today to the point where you have a profitable business. How exactly are you going to get from point A to point B? Because one of the things that you are attempting to reduce is risk. And again, what you're trying to figure out is what is that risk that you have to undertake before you get to that profitable business? So in this particular slide, as you look to the left side, these are some of the activities that you would typically be involved in to get started. Uh, doing your industry research, figuring out your demographics and your psychographics. Uh, what's your marketing plan? Uh, do you need to do some product development of some sorts? Do you have facilities that you're going to need? And do you have to put down money and deposits for that? Is there going to be a build out of some sorts? Is there going to be inventory that you need to maintain? How are you going to handle the legal and the accounting issues? These are all things that you need to anticipate and figure out on the front end before you actually jump into things. But what you're trying to get to, the first corner that you're typically going to turn is what we call break-even point. Break-even simply means that this is the point in the life of your business at which your income is equal to your expenses. Now, up to that point in time, you've been working off of something called working capital. 
and you likely only have a limited amount of working capital. So it's very, very important to turn that first corner as quickly as possible and reach that point where you're not tapping into your working capital. Think of it as your checkbook. Uh, so if you've ever uh, managed a checkbook, you know that uh, you shouldn't be writing checks when you don't have money in the bank. And so this is the same sort of a scenario. But these are the things that come into play that get you to that break-even point, your revenue forecast, your rent, your salaries, insurance, utilities, inventory, marketing. All these are expenses that you're typically going to incur. Uh, and that's the reason why your income is so important to be able to cover off all those expenses as quickly as possible. So what goes into a business plan? Well, I'm gonna lay out for you a scenario that has about seven sections to a typical business plan. And by the way, there are a lot of different strategies on putting a business plan together. You can Google the word business plan or business plans, and you will find that you'll get a lot of hits on Google that will give you everything from templates, samples, software, uh, resources, all sorts of information regarding business plans. But the reality of it is, is that all business plans are going to include uh, all of these same sections, but not necessarily in an identical order. One of the more important things, if you're going to get funding from a banker, is what we call the executive summary, which is just a quick snapshot. It's typically a one to two page little overview of what the rest of the business plan says that the banker can read through quickly, get a sense of what it is that you are uh, looking to do with your business and what the ask is. What are you asking the banker for? It's commonly again referred to as the executive summary. Shows up again as the, normally the first uh, one or two pages of any business plan. Your business overview. What's the description of your business? What's the nature of the business that you're going to undertake? Uh, what's the mission? What's the vision that you have for the business? I have a client that uh, I had worked with about 14 years ago who had a very, very progressive vision for his business. He wanted a business that could be a $10 million business within 10 years. Now that can be pretty tall stepping. Uh, for many, many people, it's like, wow, that would be a huge business. And if you took an average return of maybe 10% on that, obviously that's a million dollars a year of, um, owner benefit that can be derived. But you're also stating your goals and your objectives, your funding requirements. Again, in the context of a banker, what are you truly asking for? Mr. Banker, it's gonna take $100,000 to start my business and make all the investments necessary. That's what I'm asking you for. And oh, by the way, I've got $30,000 that I can invest. So really what the bank is looking to fund for you is $70,000 but they want an understanding of exactly what it's going to take to get your business off of the ground. I'll, over the course of this session and the next session, I will uh, maybe use a couple of uh, examples. So let's say that you're looking to go into the elder care business, which is a very, very hot business to be in. And the simple reason is that 10,000 people are turning 65 every single day. It's going to be like that up until at least 2030, at which point there'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 75 million people in this age category. They call us baby boomers over 65. Care services uh, are the focus of that kind of a business. And that could be an example of maybe the kind of business that you want to go into. And maybe you've got a goal for yourself of you want to generate $100,000 worth of revenue in the first year, Second year, 300,000. Third year, half a million dollars on your goal to move towards a million dollar business and maybe ultimately a $10 million business. That's what goes into the business overview. Why is this a good business? It's essentially the industry analysis. Now, if you look at this area called elder care, I just gave you the example, 10,000 people turning 65 every single day. That's a trend line. That's the sort of thing that you want to look for. So you want to evaluate the market for the kind of product and or service that you are thinking about potentially offering. Uh, the demographics lay out, where are these people at? And because if you looked at the Metro of Chicago, for example, you would find that there are some areas that are more conducive to households that can pay what it costs to provide these kind of services. And that's what we call demographics. So again, that's gonna be a part of what goes into your business plan as to why is this a good business to be in? Let me give you an example of a, not, a business that probably would not get a good response from a banker. Let's say you wanted to go into the Yellow Pages printing business. Well, you had, if you haven't 
been on the planet more than about five minutes, uh, you would know that that's not going to be a good business because nobody uses Yellow Pages anymore. Everybody uses these little devices that we refer to as our cell phones, our iPhones, our iPads. And that's the way in which we find out information. Uh, so uh, again, that would be an example of a business that would probably not get a good response from a banker. What's your organization going to look like? What's the structure of it going to be? How many people are you going to have to start? Is it just you? Is it you and maybe a spouse or is it uh, you a spouse and a, um, another individual? Uh, go back to the example that I gave you in the first session, I believe, that I had done. And I used an example of a client of mine who got in a commercial sign making business. When he and his wife first started their business, they went into a thousand square foot facility. It was he, his wife, and one sign maker. Today, that business has over 25 full-time employees and has uh, part-timers that calls in for bigger jobs. Uh, but there was a business structure associated with that. Who was going to be managing what? In that particular instance, Jeff was going to be taking care of the marketing and the operations management, and his wife was going to be taking care of the finance and administrative side of the business. They had defined their roles. That's how they were going to manage things. And they had a plan for when they were going to be able to bring on additional people to grow their business. He had a cadre of advisors. He had a CPA. He had an attorney. He had a business broker. Um, and other individuals that he trusted. And so these are what were considered to be the experts, if you will, in a particular area of business operations. Your operational procedures and controls, you got to ask yourself, what do I need to maintain to make my business work? Um, for example, uh, how am I going to maintain my books? How am I going to track on profit and loss? How am I going to track receivables, perhaps? Um, how am I going to do payables? All of these various different dimensions of what it takes to operate a business. Uh, if you've got a business that's going to have inventory, then you've got to have processes and procedures that you're going to control that inventory. Example, one of the highest risk kind of a businesses to go into is something related to food because restaurants and the food business can be very fickle. However, there's a much opportunity also for inventory to walk out the door. Somebody might be working in your restaurant and think, oh, they're not going to miss it if I take a couple of steaks out of the fridge and take them home with me tonight along with a nice bottle of wine. What's your methodology for how you're going to maintain control of that inventory? So you just have to think about those things in advance. Your marketing plan. Here's a simple truth, uh, folks. If you don't sell something, you don't really have a business. You've got to generate sales activity, marketing activity to make things happen. Uh, you've got to have a strategy around your pricing. Who is the competition? And what's your position within the market? What makes you different than everybody else? All these are what would be called a part of the marketing plan. Having said all of that, it's important enough that I'm going to take the very next session that we're going to do and focus specifically on how do you build that marketing plan. And then lastly, and most importantly, your financial plan. What are your projections for sales? What's your cash flow projections? What's going to be your financial position? How soon are you going to reach break even? You need to figure all this out in advance before you start your business so that you've got goals that you can establish and you've got a process by which you will be able to manage um, everything associated with what it's going to take you to get to that point of break even and get to that point of profitability. Because on average, it's not unusual for a business to not make any kind of money for the owner for at least the first six to 12 months. That would not be unusual. Sometimes it even goes longer than that. You got to make sure that you've got enough working capital to sustain yourself. That's what a banker is going to be looking for. Now, this is if you're going to create your business totally from scratch, you've got to figure every one of these pieces out. If you're going to go the franchise route, they've done a lot of this for you. They already have a marketing plan in place. That's a part of what you're buying into. They've got the recommended organization structure. They've done the demographic mapping and the psychographics. They have figured out the strategy behind the business and they have figured out what works and what doesn't work. That's what you get when you buy a franchise. That's the reason why for many people going the franchise route, it can be a very attractive alternative because they don't have to figure all this stuff out. Got a couple of tools here and 
These are tools that I'd be more than happy to provide to you in an electronic form. All you have to do is reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, using the information that was provided on the first page of, the, of this particular presentation or the first slide of this presentation. The simplicity, how to write a business plan. This is a very basic, very simple business plan. Set of instructions and an actual template that's a Word document that uh, you can use to get started. Uh, again, there are many, many different resources out there that you can tap into. Uh, it's not about volume necessarily. You don't have to write a 250 page business plan. Sometimes it can be a 10 or 15, maybe 20 page business plan. The importance is the content. Make sure that you've covered your bases. So these are tools that just get you started. Now, in addition to that, I've got a, a workbook that will allow you to put together what's known as a pro forma. This is one section, one report out of this workbook. This is the cash flow analysis. And if you uh, would read across this document, you can see it starts with the first month all the way up through the 12th month. And then reading vertically shows where you're what your working capital is or your beginning cash balance. What do you get in terms of receipts, normally referred to as revenue? Cash disbursements, what are you spending money on? And then do you have profit or loss? What's your net cash flow, positive or negative? This is again, a, a workbook document that I'd be more than happy to provide to you. And it's a good point to get you started in putting together your own business plan. So again, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to provide it for you. The basic advice that I wanna leave you with is that I want you to be intentional in the way in which you're going to start and the way in which you're going to run your business because you've done your homework. I can't say it any more clearly or crisply than that. Now this little slide here, you might chuckle when you see this bear chasing this guy on his bike down the road. Well, here's the point I'm trying to make. Putting a business plan together can seem daunting. It can actually be frustrating in some ways, but it can also be exciting. You gotta get motivated to do it because if you do not, you might find yourself in a state of disappointment. In prior years, I had done coaching and consulting work in conjunction with the Elgin Community College Small Business Development Center. People would come in there and bring in their business idea. We'd sit down and have a chat because it was a pro bono service that was offered by uh, the state of Illinois. There are SBDCs all over the metro of uh, Chicago area. People would come in. The first question I asked them, show me your business plan. Nine times out of 10, they would say, well, I don't really have one, but I need help. Well, I would give them guidance. I would give them the tools and get them started. And once I explained to them what they needed to do to put that business plan together and we set up the next appointment, I could tell you that probably eight out of 10 of those people would never show up again because it was just too daunting for them. They were too intimidated by that. They just wanted to go start their business. Not saying you can't do it that way, but it's probably not the best recipe for success. So I just wanna encourage you to think hard about that, do your homework, put your business plan together. The next session, part uh, five, we're gonna go into your marketing plan in a little bit more detail. And again, this is really uh, structured for somebody who's gonna start their business from scratch. If you're going to do a franchise, again, a lot of this will, will uh, already be done for you, but you might find it very helpful and very informational. So take a break. Thanks for being here with me for uh, this part four of the uh, workshop series. And we'll look forward to uh, sharing some additional thoughts with you. Thanks again for listening.